We have already talked about matrix or indexes designed to assess the capability of the process. When we're talking about the process capability, it's really the ability of producing some some material within the specification limits, so in compliance with some customer requirements. So we're trying to assess that the natural variety of the process actually fits within the specification limits required by the customer. As long as the variability on the quality of the product fits within the specification limits, we're safe and the product will be good quality and we can sell it. Uh, so, so specification limits most of the time come from the outside, from the customer, or we can set them up just to make sure that we're going to be able to sell to different type of customer. They're really different than the control limits which are really calculated or derived from the natural variability of the process. So the CP process capability is a first index and is just derived being as a difference between the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit over the C sigma which is the whole spread of the distribution. CPK takes into account that your process may not be centered on your target value so there could be a little slight shift between the average of the process and the target value so whatever on the upper side or on the lower side is, is, is smaller because there is a slight change on the average compared to the target value will be taken into account by the CPK and CPK cannot be greater than CP is equal or less than the CP so it's a higher constraint on the process to really assess its capability. Commonly used value for CP and CPK are a CP of 1.33 and a CPK greater than 1. You can see on the trend that the higher the spread, the lower is CP and the more you center around the process mean, the higher the CP is. So if you get a CPK equal to 1, at least you could say for a normal distributed value that 99.33% of the data will fit within the specification limit. So the higher the CPK, the better you are and the less bad product you will produce. If you want now to convert this number of variable fitting for a normal distributed variable between the plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma, if you want to convert this 99.33% into a number of reject, that would translate into 2,700 part per million reject in the production. Well, if you're trying to increase and try to fit your production within 4 sigma, 5 sigma, or 6 sigma, when you're at the 6 sigma level, almost all the variable observation will fit within the specification limit and you go down to a number of reject which is only two parts per billion. So we're going to link now this statistical concept with the Six Sigma procedure implemented into quality control. The Six Sigma methodology is really related to the statistic of the normal distribution. What we're trying to do here is say we want to minimize the number of reject and get it down to some level which is about 3.4 part per million. That's the maximum reject level we can afford for our production. So taking into account that uh, the average of the production could be not centered on the target value and could differ from the target value from 1.5 plus or minus on both sides of the target value then we allow only for a spread of the distribution to be in the order of, of minus 4.5 to 4.5 sigma. So the overall uh, distribution will fit within C sigma. 4.5 for the spread on both sides plus or minus 1.5 for the difference between the production average and the target value. So with that we'll ensure that 
we have a minimum CP of 2 and a minimum CPK of 1.5. If you go back to the previous slide about the normal distribution, you'll see that this 1.3.4 ppm falls between the 4 sigma and the 5 sigma in terms of number of reject. On this trend, we're showing the number of reject or default achieved by different type of company in relationship with C sigma level and the number of rejects. So the number of reject is the Y axis and it just translated to a number of sigma on the X axis. So you'll see that most of the processes like restaurant bill, doctor prescription, payroll processing are around 4 sigma quality so meaning they have quite a few uh, reject or faulty treatment. Uh, you see that airline baggage handling we all know that we we have trouble with the luggage sometime when we're traveling. Uh, Best-in-class company will be around C Sigma okay and when you're talking about like domestic airline and flight fatality rate I mean it's even better than that because we really cannot afford to have plane crashing down like on a daily basis so our for the people who think that those numbers are, are, are pretty high, we're going to go to this next slide and, and show you an example of how the C sigma concept relates to the, to the number of reject in, in the real life cases. Some people will object and argue that this C sigma objective is quite ambitious and maybe not really realistic. Actually, trying to reach a maximum of 3.4 part per million in terms of defect or, or bad product could appear excessive. Uh, you might think that 99.9% .9 is very good and maybe enough. Well, this 99.9% .9 would translate into the US in about 4,000 wrong medical prescription every year. More than 3,000 newborn accidentally falling from the end of nurses or doctor every year. At least two long or short landings at American airport every day and up to 400 posting per hour which will never arrive to their destination. So because we're talking about a large number of observation for those processes that's going to lead to a lot of, of bad data and bad product in the end. 